continuing our roaster build today. This is our 12 pound RK drum roaster. And on the left hand side, we've just installed a bracket and our bearing. On the right hand side, we've installed a bracket and a bearing. So uh, once again, as we mentioned in the previous videos, we only use this bracket on the big 12 pounder. Everything else, we just support this side with the motor only. Uh, so now we're gonna get to the motor setup and this is the same no matter what size drum that you have. We're gonna cover a couple things. Number one, this is our motor plate. This is where we mount our motor. Our motor mounts here to the back side of this plate, shaped like this, and we'll be able to slide it up and down with these slots. And then here, this bottom slot mounts to our big base plate at the bottom, and we'll, we'll slide forward and backwards to adjust the lateral position with the rotisserie. So what we're gonna do is cover how to put all this part together. So the first thing that I wanna do is I've already kind of lined up my rotisserie. I've not locked anything down right now. This is all just loose. I can slide it all back and forth. I can move the rotisserie rod. I want it all loose for right now while I'm mocking everything up. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to mock up the positioning of the plate and the motor. And I just wanna rough it out. I don't want to, to bolt anything down yet. I wanna make sure all my positions are, are, are set up correctly. So I do want to have this motor mount and the base plate as far away from the heat as I can get it. And it depends on how much rotisserie you have on the other side to push through. Now that rotisserie over there on that side, this is the long 50 inch rod. It's probably too long for this grill. You probably could have gone with the standard 40 inch rod, but this is in this case um, a very long rod. We, if your grill is wider, if this part of your grill is wider than say 32 or 33 inches when you measure it across, then you want this long rod. This is like a 27 inch grill. The 40 inch rod, standard rod would have been fine. So we're going over here and we're setting up our motor. We want this motor to be positioned as far away from the grill as we can. I may even consider mounting this on the, on the outer edge, but if you can at least get it three to four inches away, then that's gonna be good enough. Uh, in this case, I've got plenty of rotisserie over here and I can get my motor very far away. And so I think in this case, we'll mount it here on this outer edge. So if you come over here close and have a look, what I want to start with is I'm going to have my two narrow holes right down the middle of my rotisserie, like this. My, these are my outer bracket, my outer holes. And now if you'll notice that there's two small holes here, but not here. This is where my switch goes. So I've actually got this wrong. I'm gonna flip this over. I'm gonna flip it over this way because I wanna mount my power switch over here on these holes and I wanna keep uh, that power switch close to me when I'm operating the rooster. So again, we're gonna line up the, the two holes that we have here. And you can see it's roughly eyeballed right between from this rotisserie point to this hole and this rotisserie point to this hole. It's right in the middle. The reason for that is, is when we put the motor plate on, we want to have a little bit of leeway to slide this plate right or left like this to line up the motor with the rotisserie shaft. That's why we do that. Now, so that's probably gonna be a pretty good spot for us. Um, and next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and position my motor on this bracket. So let me get my motor and here's my motor and I'm going to position the motor just like this, okay? This is a fan shaft. We're not gonna bother with the fan right now while we're, we're just working around. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put the motor on my plate. So we've sent you these, we've sent these wide slide washers. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna, here's how the order it's gonna go. It's gonna go screw, flat washer, on the drum side of the plate like this, then another flat washer, and then our motor. I'm just going to go ahead and, and all I'm doing is finger tightening here. I'm just lining it up. I'm just going to just turn that screw. Into the threads. It take a minute to get it, but you can see how 
it lines up there and it lines up there and then I'm just I'm just gonna think I'm not even gonna get it tight I'm just gonna get it kind of roughed out and then I'm gonna do the same thing for for the other screws now this motor does have six holes you don't need all six you only need just four of them So getting this last one in. So with that, I basically have my four screws, washers on either side. Look at the other side, you can see. And then this allows the motor assembly to slide up and down the bracket. That, that's how we can change our height. Okay. The next thing we want to do is we want to make sure that all this lines up. So you come over here on this side and you can see roughly we're just going to get things kind of mocked up. Get the shaft level. And then you can tighten these screws down. I'll go ahead and get my drill. Now that I've lined this up, I'm just going to tighten this down. If you're not exactly sure of the height, you can see this lines up very nicely. If you're not sure of the height, you might want to give it a little bit of extra room. But I went ahead and locked this down uh, at the right height. All right, so the next thing we want to do is we want to make sure we position this base plate. We got our motor height set, so let's position our base plate. In this particular case, because I have in this particular case because I have a lot of extra rotisserie rod over here. I can move this bar as far as I want, but I want to get my motor as far away from the heat as I can, so once again I'm going to line this up. Now on some grills you may, you may have your plate somewhere in the middle of your tray. In my case I've got a lot of rotisserie rods so it's very easy for me just to line it up at the edge of this. So if you do position this in the middle of the tray, make sure with a tape measure that your distance is the same. So here you can see I've got five inches. And back here I've also lined up and get five inches. So make sure that that stays the same. Now at a minimum, you really wanna have about three inches if, you're, if you've got the short rod and that's all the space you've got. Really, if, you're gonna, if you got about three inches, we can make that work. If it's bigger than that, you, or if it's shorter than that, like over here, one or two inches, you might have some heat problems and problems with your coupler. So at least three inches away, and if we can get four or five inches away, that's even better. Uh, in my particular case, I'm gonna come all the way out here to the edge. Not only does it give me a nice place, a nice straight edge for me to line it up on, I've got eight inches, and I got eight inches there. And then I'm gonna make sure that I have my rotisserie rod lined up in the middle of these two holes. Once I get that position, I'm gonna use my, my pencil and I'm gonna mark these positions. I'm just drawing on the grill itself. And I want the four big holes. These two are for cable tie downs if you wanna use them. And then I really care about these holes here for mounting in the switch box. So, now, if you have an old-fashioned tube grill where you have tubes coming out, you can use muffler clamps and you can clamp these slots to the tubes. In other words, you have a muffler clamp that goes around the tube from the bottom and then you have bolts here to tie it in if you have one of the old grills. I haven't seen one of those in probably 10 years, so that probably is not going to be a factor. So now I've got a, hole, I've got a bolt hole here, a bolt hole here, here, and here. One, two, three, four. And that's how I'm going to bolt this plate down. So, and then I've got two holes here for my uh, switch box. So with that, I'm ready to drill. And I'm going to need a 5 16 drill bit for that. Looks about like this. It's 
also going to be the same size as our bolt holes. So roughly the same size as that. So it's a, these are 5 16 bolts. That's a 5 16 drill bit. So I'm going to go ahead and before I do that, though, I'm going to use my center punch, my nail and hammer here. I'm going to get right in the center of my holes of my drawing. I've got four of them. Put a nice dent. I don't want that drill bit to walk around. And while I'm at it, there's my four, and then I'm just going to go ahead and make two holes for my switch box. That's going to be a smaller drill bit, though. All right, perfect. So now here's my 5 16 drill bit. I'm going to go ahead and make my hole. And so even that wanted to walk around despite me despite me making that uh, that dent just wanting to walk around might have to get started slowly there it goes once it got started it went pretty easy Four holes and while I'm at it we're gonna go ahead and drill the small ones this is all really quite easy once you see what we're trying to do one little one here now these are gonna be the small screws that come in your kit you can see we got a small bit here and these are just gonna go here to hold down the screw box. We'll show you that next. All right, so with that done, we can go ahead and line up our plate. We've got our motor here. We're gonna go ahead and position the motor here. If we come in close, we can have a better look. And we're going to put one screw or one bolt, one washer in. bottom and it does another bolt I'm just hand tightening it right now and then we can come back with the ratchet and the wrench All right, so now I'm just going to take my, my uh, wrench here, which is a one half, and I've got a socket, which is a one half, and I'm going to just put the, put the wrench on the bottom, and we're going to tighten it down. Now, I'm only going to tighten these back ones because I still want to line up my front one a little bit. So that's in position. It's not going anywhere at all. But I can, if you notice here, I can still slide the motor. And that's what I want to do to make sure I get it lined up. Okay. Next part here is we're going to take our coupler. Now, if you notice, one side is larger than the other. This, the larger one goes on the rotisserie. The shorter, the, the smaller diameter goes on the motor. And this sits in between. Like this. That's how it's going to look. So this goes on the motor, this goes on the rotisserie, and it separates like this when you want to unload the drum. So if you come over here now, we're going to position this. We're just going to slide this on to the end of the rotisserie shaft, and let me get my Allen wrenches. I'm just going to tighten this down on the shaft. Tightening it down on the square face of the shaft, and that's nice and snug. 
and then over here I'm going to do the same thing. Now I'm going to pull this spider grommet is what we call those. I'm going to pull that out for now and I'm going to just tighten this down. There we go. Now, again, I have plenty of rod over here so I can slide this in. But if you're setting this up for the first time, you won't want to run this all the way through to here. You want to leave a little bit of room, a little bit of space so that you can adjust it. That'll allow you to tighten things up later at the end. I'll go over here now, position in. And then I'll put it together like that. You want to make sure that this is level. That from this angle, if you look flat at it, it's, it's very nice and level. And then looking down from above, it's nice and straight. You don't want to have the rotor struggling to keep it all together. So now, now that we've got this lined up, we're ready to go ahead and bolt down this motor. So I'm going to put my wrench on the bottom to hold that in place. And we're going to tighten this bolt up. All right, so that's nice and firm. It's not going anywhere. It's like I've got a little bit, a little bit of wobble because of this metal tray is not as maybe strong as I would like it to be, but that's not going to be a problem. Now I do want to take this moment and point out that this drum does need to sit level. You should put a bubble level right up here on top of this drum, particularly if you don't have this bracket. If you don't have this bracket, you're going to use this motor to raise and lower this side of things. And if you raise it high, then this drum might not be level. So we have a bracket over here on this side, which kind of levels things out. But on the smaller kits, the 8-pound, the 6-pound, the 4-pound, and the 2-pound, you might want to uh, put a bubble level here on top of the drum first, level it up, and once you have it leveled, then come tighten the screws back. Now I want to just tighten up everything that I have here on the, on the kit. So I'm going to come over here, I'm going to push my my rotisserie firmly into the motor and I'm going to go ahead and spin it make sure everything lines up you can turn the motor you can hear the motor turning everything turns nice and smooth I'm going to push my drum a little bit over just a bit try to get it in the middle and then now I'm going to go ahead and lock down my collars here on both sides and my bearings. So my bearing is going to get locked down. Tighten that one. I'm going to turn this to get to my collar. Tighten this down. Also one thing I want to point out at this spot is make sure that this latch actually clears all parts of your grill. See how I have a, about almost a finger's width of space right here? If you had slid the drum this way, then that could actually hit your grill. So just make sure that this free spins before you lock all this down. And then I'm going to lock down my last bearing right here. All right, that was a long video. If you hung into the end, then uh, congratulations. We're done with building the, the physicality of this. Matter of fact, you can close this turn this by hand and make sure it all turns and nothing bangs sounds pretty good so next next part video is going to be wiring up the electrical it's a lot easier than it seems a lot of people kind of panic when it comes to the electrical part i promise we make it easy hang in there and we're almost done